Okay, so the purpose of this is basically I want us to start kind of looking at how do we get our students more involved, okay? Um, and that's not saying that they're not involved now because I've been in y'all's classrooms, and they are. Um, it's just a matter of how can we get better. I firmly believe that there's always room to get better. Um, I think everybody in here believes that or y'all wouldn't be teachers. Um, so what is the sort of overall goal for this? Um, basically, what I want us to do is I want us to learn how to um, be able to provide feedback to one another uh, in meaningful ways so that we can improve the engagement of our students and thus their academic performance. And now, so the logic behind that is we all have different backgrounds. Fred Muller's worked in another division. Kathy's worked in another division. Uh, Melissa has the elementary school behind us. Mr. Trumbo is saying um, we've got, you know, Ms. Craighead who's been in Roanoke City. So we've got a lot of different people that have a lot of different experiences other than just working here. Um, and so, you know, I think it would be foolish for us not to utilize each other's resources. Um, so, with that being said, kind of what I want us to focus on is student engagement. Now, kind of my overall goal for this is that starting next year, um, and we will have more sessions on this, um, we will sort of begin um, kind of walk through peer observations in each other's classrooms. And I know that sounds kind of intimidating and scary. Um, if I were still in the classroom and you told me that Fred Muller was going to come look at me and watch me teach, I would probably be a little intimidated. I certainly would be intimidated if, uh, you know, Kathy or somebody came in there. So I know that's a little intimidating. But we're not going to be looking at what the teachers do. We're going to be looking at what the students are doing. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you, I've got a, um, like a, a handout observation form, and it focuses just on what the students are doing. And so the, the theory, kind of thinking behind this, is we get another set of eyes in there. Um, you know, you could be up there teaching, talking, doing whatever, and the other person could just be saying, okay, well, little Johnny seems to get bored here, or Sally struggles here. Um, we're a small enough district that we already do this anyway. You know, I mean, how many times have, um, you know, you've gone to another teacher and said, hey, I have a problem with this kid. What have you done? So we're already doing that. It's just a matter of us sort of kind of formalizing it, making it a little bit more of a structured activity, I guess, if you will. Um, and so to begin with, why is this important? Well, number one, it's going to increase our professional knowledge. Um, we're going to get smart. We're going to get better. You know, the analogy that I use is, would you go to a doctor who's been practicing medicine the same way for 20 years? The answer is no, right? You, <laughs> you wouldn't go to some guy who still does the thing, same thing he did back in the early 80s, right? You want them, somebody who's up to date, who's current, and we need to be current. We need to make strides to be current. We're not going to be current if we don't make the effort, okay? Um, I want to build a community that focuses on continual improvement. Um, I'll be the first to admit that I am very resistant to change. I get comfortable with something, and I like it, and that's the way I'm going to do it. And if you don't believe me, ask Mrs. Wheeler. Uh, she will 100% she will agree with that. But what I've learned is that does not, that does not benefit you. If you never try anything new, you never grow. Okay? If we expect our students to come in and improve academically and learn new things, then we should too. Right? And, Again, I'm not saying that anybody in here doesn't do that. I'm just saying that I want it to be a more focused effort on that. Um, I'm not saying that I want to send all y'all to professional developments every other week. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, I think that there's a lot that we can learn from each other. And I think that sometimes, sometimes we do that well, and then other times we don't. Uh, and I just want us as a faculty to be focusing on that, okay? 
improve student achievement, that's probably the bottom line right there, is that's what it has to be about. Everything we do in this building needs to be to improve student achievement. And again, I'm not saying that our students aren't achieving. They are achieving. They're doing really well. Um, you know, we've done, we've made a lot of good strides the last few years. Uh, but with that being said, we can always do better. Um, you know, there, there's always room for our students to, to improve. Reach all of our students. Um, one of the things that I think we do extremely well here is we know who those kids are that are going to struggle from day one. Um, if you teach eighth grade, even if you have never had the student until eighth grade, you already know that student, you already know his name, you already know what kind of student he is, you already know that he's going to struggle with certain things. So we, we identify them very, very well. I think the area that we seem to struggle with is what do we do once we've identified. Um, and I feel, like, I feel like that's something that we should try to work on. Um, you know, I, I feel like that we, if we can identify them, we certainly can, can make them we can reach them a little bit better. Um, and I wish Mrs. Crowder would have stayed here because she fussed at me because I used the word fun on the survey. Make learning more enjoyable, not fun, enjoyable. You know, if kids are, if they're excited about coming to class, if they enjoy history or if they enjoy science, um, then their achievement's going to increase. Again, not saying that Fred's class is boring as can be or Chad's is. Um, but it's certainly not history, right? It's certainly not. Just kidding. Never, never history. Just kidding. Never. Just kidding. Okay, so research shows that if they're engaged, they'll be less likely to present permit, or present problems. Uh, we know that. We see that every day. If a kid's bored, we're going to be acting up. Um, I was that kid. I, I think Fred was that kid. Um, and then, again, if they're engaged, you're going to learn better, okay? So, what do we say about, what do we say about engagement? Um, what do you think were some common themes on that survey that I had y'all? How do you think we answered? In general, are we, do we think our kids are engaged or do we think they're not engaged? I would say in the Elementary and middle school, your students are more engaged in an activity for the majority of the class period more so than in high school because we know that their attention span is not very long, so we change up the activities. I would agree. Okay. Like you do a worksheet, you do a warm up, you do something else. Where in the high school, you tend to do more of a lecture, you tend to go through, and different classes are going to vary different ways. Where in history, it's a lot easier to get up and give a lecture than it is in math class where you've got to work the problems, you know. But back in the day, it was like, you know, you saw the teacher do it, and then we practiced it 50 problems, solving quadratic functions or, you know, whatever. Now it's kind of like, you know, I do it, we do it, you do it. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, you know, or it was guided practice, you know, independent practice, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that you're using this board instead of a blackboard is so much changed from what it was. Yeah. But that's the way our kids are nowadays. You've got to keep them involved. And the minute they get up in the morning, the TVs go on the phone, yeah. video game. <laughs> so you've got to do that in your classroom. I, I and totally that was hard for me because I'm like, why can't they sit and pay attention and listen like we had to do? That was very hard for me to bring in and to accept. Yeah, I, and, I, and I would agree. And by and large, I think that we do a good job of that. I think that I don't think that anybody in here sort of struggles with that. I think I think we're really good about sort of breaking things up and doing different things. Um, and so you know, on those surveys that y'all did, majority of y'all said the students are not bored in your class. And I and I know that survey. Well, let me let me just tell you about the survey for a second. I wrote it in such a way that it was sort of in general because I don't want us to focus on English needs to improve or social studies needs to improve. We all need to improve, right? We can all get better. Um, and so I kind of wanted to just take a snapshot of just sort of in general. And that's why when I asked the students, it was in general, not specifically towards the class. But in general, teachers that surveyed, and I think I got eight of those nine back, 
Um, students are not poor. They're not poor. I would say the majority of them are not. And the ones that are, we try to pinpoint and then try mm -hmm. to put them into different classes or find something else to do with them. I mean, you know, give them other things to occupy themselves. Yeah, and so I just took sort of the four um, random questions. I didn't, I didn't put them all up here, but in general, we said they're engaged, we said they're interested, and that they enjoy school. Okay? And again, that's kind of what I think. What do you think the students said? I imagine that you're sixth grade students. If middle school is greatly different than the elementary setting. Greatly, greatly different. It's different for me. As mm -hmm. a, as a, it's different for me. It's teaching, teaching English all day, every day, and getting them <coughs> up and moving and getting them active is quite a challenge for me. Whereas teaching them seven different subjects a day where we're moving about and 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 it's, it's much easier to keep them engaged because we're, we're constantly changing. So I would suspect that the students, specifically the sixth grade students, um, were felt less engaged and less, less bored. That would be my guess. And I don't know how you would differentiate between your stacks of surveys, but... Yeah. Well, you say eighth grade's less? I would say they probably consider themselves to be bored because they just they hate school at this point. They're eighth graders. Yeah. And at this point of the year, if you ask them back in the beginning of the year or something when they weren't, you know, in through it yet or whatever, they were they done. Yeah. And, and I would totally agree. They were proud to be the hot dogs at the beginning of the year. Right now, they just want to get out. Right? I think everybody's bored with school at this point of the year, <laughs> teachers included. But um, no, in general, um, I think I put percents on. 61% of the people that were in the survey, and this is 6 through 8, I didn't break it down individual, 61% said they're bored in class. Um, that's not a super scientific survey, and I totally understand that, and so don't put a whole lot of stock into it. I just kind of wanted to get a sample, kind of an idea, snapshot of what they're thinking. 61% um, of the 104, I think, surveys we got back um, said that they are bored in class. Mr. Willie, did they say, was that 61% said they're bored all the time, like that first column, or are they just in general? They, they the, way, the way that it's worded is you can either be, I took it as either they, they agreed that they're bored or they strongly agreed that they're bored. Right, so they were some level of bored in their class, in general, um, throughout the day. It doesn't mean they weren't learning something. No, and it doesn't. And they weren't it, engaged, it, they were just right. bored. Right, and, and, and again, it's, like I said, it's not a super scientific survey, so don't, you know, don't go write an essay or a paper and quote me on any of this, but um, it's just sort of kind of an idea, a rough idea of what, what our students think. Um, that one didn't surprise me. 46 said they don't like doing assignments. I don't like doing assignments. I don't think anybody likes doing assignments. Uh, so that one, you know, didn't, that one doesn't surprise me nearly as much. I would have thought that would have been higher. I actually would have thought it would have been higher, too. Um, and I would have thought um, that going through the data, I would have thought that more boys, like a lot more boys, would have said that versus girls. But it was pretty even, actually, which kind of surprised me. Um, 45 said they're not interested in class. Um, some of that is probably the fact that it's April, almost April. And, you know, they've been at it for a while. We didn't have a lot of snow days, so they're probably not interested in class right now. And then 38% said they're not challenged by school. Um, and again, that doesn't kind of, that doesn't really surprise me either. I kind of expected it to be somewhere in that range. Um, overall, it's not that bad. Right, and it, it's it's there. I don't like the first one. I wish that one were a little less. Uh, but the other ones aren't awful. But I would like to see those numbers go down. Were they were they given any opportunity to give exact? They were, and some of them. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the questions was, uh, how can we make learning more enjoyable? I think for you. Um, and one of the things that I saw a lot was like more hands-on. Um, they praised STEM. Um, they, I think there were several that even said something to the effect of like more activities like STEM. Um, and so, That's what I was going to say about the board part, that the, that one, if they could be more hands-on, that the assignments were something that were more like a STEM assignment to where they were thinking and working right. at the same time than just 
and, and I think that I think that and Mrs. Good and I went to um, a um, professional development on project-based learning or PBL. Um, and so the whole idea is that you create something, you make, you physically make something. Um, and I think that we're going to see more. I think we're going to see more of a push towards that across all disciplines um, in the next ten years or so. Um, but they definitely, the students definitely cited. Um, STEM, more hands-on stuff. Uh, just some general things that I noticed. Um, males seem to be more dissatisfied than females. Again, we all know that. I mean, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a surprising st statistic. Fred Muller got it right. Um, the eighth grade no. really seemed to hate school, um, although there was probably more in the sixth grade that were dissatisfied or that were bored or unhappy than were happy, but that seventh grade sort of brought it. Seventh grade seems to be pretty happy, so whatever we're doing in seventh grade seems to be going really well. Um, <laughs> sixth grade was, you know, yeah. not too happy. Eighth grade is miserable. They, they, I mean, I can't tell how many strongly disagree or strongly agrees I saw. They were pretty much all negative. So. And, and, and I agree. I agree. And I think that's why this is good wanted uh, me or like, let, hired me so that I could do the eighth grade because she was tired of the eighth grade. Yep. So. So the slide is about engagement. Yes. And I saw that you're not, what, it, the, what it says next. Um, I went to a professional development yesterday. It was like a presentation. Teaching English is really hard to do anything other than read, 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 yes. sit, 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 read, read, read. We try to come up with activities. We try to move around the room. Um, we have a new program that we're adopting for next year that is very, has all kinds of hands-on activities mm -hmm. and very few worksheets. So there we go. There we go. And it's going to be adapted for sixth and seventh grade yeah. for next year. So I guess the question, the million dollar question, and the question that I can figure out how to answer <coughs> out um, is how do we fix it? How do we how do we take what we have, which is already good, but how do we make it better? You know, how how do we how do we improve on that? Um, and so, you know, why don't y'all take just a few minutes and write down a couple of things, um, and then I guess we can share with a partner and see what y'all come up with, and then we will discuss them in general. Repeat our prompt for us again. <laughs> what it's specifically to write down? Yeah. Um, what? How, how do we? How do we get our students warmed up? What can we do to get them to just absolutely like knock each other down because they're trying to get into Mr. Perry's classroom for every day? There you go. Yeah. You cannot bribe them with food. So go ahead and mark off donuts there, Mr. Perry. You can't. Can't bring in Dunkin' Donuts every day. Oh, so I can bring in crispy. Mm -hmm. Only if Ducks Duck oh, Donuts are good. Yeah. Do you want us to share with each other or yeah. share with you? Yeah, go ahead. Once you've got a couple, just talk amongst yourselves for a minute and then we'll come together. I just said that. I, 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 I
water, false water getting on something like that, which you can't do every day. Right. But but just like right on the carpet, when you pick up on the room, you go around, and everybody puts you know, like a cylinder that would put a nail on the that would just move and move and move. Or you can work chart paper at long and fast. Use this Chromebook Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Have the chair on front read instead of the board read. Yeah. 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 Y
it's easy for me because I'm familiar over there, but I could easily go talk to the fifth grade English teacher and find out what works for these children and share with the seventh grade English teacher what happened. So I could do that, um, I could do that vertically, but I could also do that, you know, do it horizontally. You can do it year, year to year or class to class. And, and that was the sort of overall goal mm -hmm. of why we have uh, common planning periods between the departments. Uh, so that we can do that sort of stuff, talk about what's going on. Um, and, you know, some of that's my fault that I facilitate that a little bit better this year. Um, but, you know, but that's... You did that a lot with your writing. Yeah. Even with yes. writing a lot. And, and even, even when we didn't have common planning, it, we still did. You know, yeah. Mrs. Good and I would talk all the time about where we were at in se seventh grade. I would always be about two weeks ahead of her, but we always talked about it. Um, you know, there was a couple of lessons that she would come in and do for my class uh, while I would go with hers. And so we already do that. The, the, what I want is for us to be more focused on doing that um, and more of a concerted effort to make sure that that's happening. And again, it's already happening. I just want us to sort of take that extra step, um, you know, sort of hit us in the rear end and get us get us moving a little bit further. Um, some other things I said. Um, learning from each other, which I learned a lot from Mrs. Good. She was my mentor. I mean, I, I give her a mad credit for the fact that I lasted for, well, I survived my first year. <laughs> Everybody survives their first year, and it's uh, you look back and you think, my gosh, how did I make it? Uh, but, you know, just working with each other, learning from each other, um, focusing on the problem, um, not the symptoms of the problem. And I think a lot of times we have a tendency, and I'm not talking about just us, I'm talking about education in general. I think a lot of times we have a tendency to, to, to sort of put a broken, or put a band-aid on a broken arm, right? You know, that, that's not going to fix the problem. Uh, the last two are probably the most important for this process to work. Um, and we're gonna have, we're gonna talk a lot more about this later on, um, but I'll try to be brief with it. Um, for this to work, we have to be open and honest with each other. And we have to trust each other. And we already do a great job of that. Um, I think that for the most part, everybody in here um, is honest and trustworthy with each other and, and vice versa. But it's going to take a lot of trust and respect to let somebody come into your classroom and look at what your kids are doing while you're doing it. And we have to keep the mindset that we're coming in so that we can grow together. Not that I can come in and I can say, Melissa Whiting, you're doing a terrible job. It's I want to come in and say, hey, Melissa, I really like that. Um, how can we make this part of it better? Or if I go into Chad's, um, you know, they did really well with adverbs. They seem to be missing the boat on adjectives. How can we fix that together? Um, and so it, we, we, have to, we have to trust that we're doing it for the right reasons. We have to be open to getting that honest feedback. And that's tough. And I, hey, if I had a teacher come into my room and tell me I was doing something wrong, I would be, I would be a little bit put off by it. But we're not, we're not coming in to tell each other what we're doing wrong. We're coming in there to tell each other what we're doing right and how we can make it better. What's the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is I would eventually like to get it to where that we could go in and almost, almost observe one another um, and just say, you know, here's what I saw when you were doing this. Um, do you think we could do it a little bit differently? Or I really liked what Fred Muller did at that point. I might, I might try to use that. Um, I will tell you that watching somebody else teach is an eye-opening experience because you learn things or pick up on things that I, you know, I never did. I mean, watching Chad a couple of times this year. There's stuff that he did that I had no clue about. Um, there was stuff that um, I, I'd never even thought of. Um, 
And so that's kind of that's kind of what I want for us is to just be able to to be able to go in each other's classrooms and look around and you know then have a conversation with that per that person, not with the intent of you know Melissa telling Chad he's a terrible teacher, not that. Um, I just want us to be able to to work together to to get better. With the ultimate goal being student achievement. Yes, yes. Right. that's the point I was looking for. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. Student, the ultimate goal. Student so, achievement. So, again, coming from elementary school, coming from self-contained classrooms, it's easy to look at the whole child. Mm -hmm. um, but again, us being a small district here, if I have a child, Johnny, you know, just Johnny, who just I know despises English, if I talk to Johnny and find out, my goodness, he loves science, it would be to it would behoove me to go watch him in science yes. and see what reaches him. Yes. And or see, try to find things to read more about science to try to yes. interest him to see. What and if and if we're if we're observing others and we know where each other's at and their different respective content, you know, if y'all have to write a paper, you could write a paper on what Mrs. Good's teaching about in World War Two. I would be in books that went along with World War II, like um, Milkweed, um, several of them, like that. So it went right along with what they were in the yes. class. And I, and I think that that's a good way to sort of, sort of focus our students' attention on sort of everything, you know, and, and always do it without them knowing. That's the cool mm -hmm. thing. You sort of manipulate sort of the puppet master. They don't really know what's going on, but it all fits together nicely. And the professional development that I attended yesterday, the small group books, which are the independent level books, are science and social studies related only, and they're adapted to the Virginia syllabus. Nice. So, yeah, it's done for us in the new program. Yeah, that's been done for history in parallel with literature as well as history. Mm -hmm. All that's been congruent over the years, just given different names. Right. And, and, you know, I'm certainly not saying that we need to reinvent the wheel. That is, you know, I think y'all are doing a great job as is. Um, all that we would be doing is just sort of refocusing a little bit. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a list of strategies that you have to do in every class, but I want you to be able to have those strategies in your back pocket so that you can use. Um, well, we've had to do that this year with a couple of students. It's like, how, how do you keep that one to be engaged, you know, whatever. Sometimes we run the, the thing to where we have them after the elective, which is really engaging, and we have them after PE, which is really engaging. Yeah. Um, or you have them after lunch and it's a, it's chaos. Right. Know? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm all tired because I've right. you know, been eating and I'm, I've got to use the bathroom all the time, or I'm tired. I'm gonna take my nap. Or, yeah. mm -hmm. You know. So it's like, well, what you know? How do you keep that one going or whatever? And so we've already had to, you know, gotten together to do some of that because right. we are small. You can kind of do that in the hallway right. or at lunch. And and you know, that is probably our biggest strength as Craig County Public Schools is the fact that there are two social studies teachers, two English teachers, and everybody at some point will have taught every single student that's come through here. You know, that, that provides us with such an insight that a lot of schools just don't have. Um, and so we just need to be able to tap into that. And, and, and I think that we do individually. I think that, you know, we're all real good about seeking help from others when we need to. But I think as a whole, we just need to sort of refocus and, and make sure that we're all kind of on the same page. Uh, so let's talk about what it's going to look like when you go into classroom. Does anybody want a cookie? We need to take a five-minute break. Mr. Perry, is he good? We need a donut. Mm -hmm. I already have a donut. You already, you already had one. <laughs> okay. So first and foremost, when we do this, when you go into another person's classroom. We are looking at what the students are doing. We're not looking at what Fred Muller's doing or Bo Trumbo. We're looking at what little Johnny is doing or little Sally is doing. Uh, and so what I'm handing you out now is a sample of a form that we could use. We can tweak it however we want. Uh, that just sort of gives us a guide as to what to look for. Um, let me say, when you go into a class, you're not going to find all of these. It would be very hard pressed for you to 
see everything on that list in 15 minutes. Um, but we could look and we could see, you know, are they peer tutoring? Are they working together? Is there a student that walks around and helps others? Or, you know, whatever it is. The key to this is we talk to one another about what we see. Um, I can remember I had to film myself one time before when I was student teaching, which was an awful experience. I hated the way I looked on film. But what I discovered was that there was a lot of stuff going on that I had no idea about. And, you know, I think we as teachers like to think that we see everything that goes on in the classroom, but we don't. And so you need to have an extra set of eyes in there that can kind of help you see where certain kids are getting, losing their interest or, or you know, or it sort of picks back up. Um, work together to find ways to reach those students. How can we make little Johnny or little Susie more interested in class? Um, the trick is, though, it has to be specific. Um, and this was something that I kind of struggled with. Um, and I think Mr. Perry's, I observed him and he knows. When you, when you give feedback, if it's just general, like your students were engaged, that doesn't tell you anything, right? That, that, that provides you no meaning. But if I say seven out of the 10 students in that classroom were on task for every single activity, two struggled when we talked about adverbs, and one put his head down and fell asleep when we were talking about verbs. That's a lot more specific, and that kind of helps you to sort of hone in on what areas you are um, that we need to work on as, 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 a, as a unit. Um, so when we do this, and we'll do it in just a minute, we'll practice it in just a minute, um, you want to, if you check a box, write something beside it. Write something specific beside it. So like, for example, if we're doing this, and let's say that I asked a question, and um, Kathy Looney responds. We would check off number three on the bottom, responds orally, and then we would list specifically, you know, student Kathy Looney responded to question that Chad Perry's asked, or whatever it was. Um, if I had y'all use a manipulative, um, you would say, I saw. 10 out of the 12 students using um, the manipulative to complete the assignment or whatever. So it has to be real specific. If it's vague, it doesn't really do us any good. But the problem is, is that all of our evaluations in recent years, and probably forever, are vague, right? You know, you walk in and you, you get it and it says, students are engaged and Mr. Wheeler has a good repertoire with the students. Well, that doesn't really tell you anything, right? That, that doesn't, that's sort of a warm and fuzzy kind of thing to say. Well, warm and fuzzy doesn't really tell me where I need to improve. Um, so are there any questions on this? So if we go and we watch a video, are we going to be able to do this? Let me ask a question. Why yes. do you say lower yield practices? Um, because where, where does that term come from? Lower yield means that the students do them, but they don't retain as much information from them. Students, students learn a lot more if they create something, if they teach it to another student, versus you know us just saying, um, what's two plus two, and they raise their hand and answer. Um, now, it's not that those lower yield strategies are bad. I mean, we use those all the time. Um, you know, I've used those in here. I've asked y'all questions, and y'all responded to me orally. So it's not that they're bad. It's just we want to see we want to get to where our classrooms look like 1 through 13. And we eventually, at the end of this, I, we, we should be doing more of the 1 through 13 than we are of the, the bottom 1 through 5. Um, certainly number 5, but if you've got Fred Moeller in your class, it's, <laughs> can't help it. Uh, all right, so we want to try one of these? Here's just, uh, I put that up there so we can talk about it, but y'all have already done that. All right, give me just a second to pull this up. This will work first time. So 
today is the seventh, and we are working on lesson eight dash four. And today we're going to be talking about classifying triangles. But before we get started on that, I wanted to quickly um, grab our strings and review what we know about angles, because a lot of the stuff that we know about angles is going to be applied to our classifying triangles. So, grab your blue strings. Find a spot. Be standing so that you can check your neighbors, right? First, we're going to start off, show me the smallest type of angle that you know. What is our smallest type of angle? I'm going to start right there because I've already noticed something that I can mark on. Does anybody, we look at number 11, creates learning tools. So they're using manipulatives, right? Mm -hmm. right. They're manipulating something to show them their angles. So we can go ahead and mark that one. But the trick is, is we got to write specifically what they're doing. Students are using string. String. blue string to show right. to show area or to show and triangles, angle types angle, of triangles. Small angle so that would go up and creates products. It could go in either one. Yeah, Some of these could go in either yeah, one, and that's yeah, totally that's fine. Um, or it could go. Could it go under visualizing too? Yep. Number ten. She spoke at the, she told them at the very beginning of class what they were doing. Yeah, what we're doing. I was going to say that was specific. Yeah, very, very specific. specific. She set the learning goals. She told yeah, them what we're doing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The students were focused. Oh. Okay. Riley, what is this kind of angle called? It's called an acute angle. How small can an acute angle be? One degree. One degree. One, and how large can it be? 89. 89, okay. So there's another one that she did. Asking and generating questions. Yep. It could also be number three on the very bottom, response orally. She asked a question, the students responded. Um, What's the next? What what comes after 89? Joy, a 90 degree angle. Show me a 90 degree angle. Check your neighbors, make sure it looks good. Go. There was another one. What'd she do there? She asked the students check to check each other. Peer review. Yeah. yeah, so number eight. Mm -hmm. Is this one in the gray for participating? Is the one in the gray front? Yes. Ah. Uh -huh. He looks off task. He does look off task, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. I noticed that too. Yeah. So, number five at the very bottom. Watch him. Yeah. Watch so, if we keep watching. Maybe. Tabitha, what is this angle called? Right angle. Okay. How big can a right angle be, Alika? Only 90. Only 90. 91? No. 92? No. 89? No. Okay. No. Only 90 degrees. Okay. Brandy, what's our next one? After right, after 90 degrees, what do we go to next? What type of angle? Up two. Show me an obtuse angle. I I would I would I think he's doing it, but I think he's he's, he's doing it in his own way. He's yeah, doing it in his own way. His own so if you're just observing from the outside, you could put we don't know his name, but let's say his name's Johnny. We could say we'll cross we'll say yes for off task behavior, and we could say that during the um, during the assignment to make the triangles out of your blue string, Johnny appeared to be off task because he was flailing around or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go to discuss that with, with uh, the teacher, she may say, that's how Johnny does it. Yeah. And Johnny does really well at that. But we wouldn't know that. But as long as it's specific in our observation, that gives us something to talk about. I noticed when I first watched this, I was like, that kid ain't doing anything. And then the more and more I watched it, I was like, well, it kind of looks like he is doing it. He's just that fidgeter. He's that kid that... He's doing it in his own way. So yeah. he's picking up what he picks up, but he doesn't, may not be picking up everything. He's that kid that, that there's always that one in the class that, that always seems to do things a little bit differently than everybody else. But, yeah. 
Do I split in my skirt? <laughs> Check your neighbors. How's it look? All right. So just in that two and a half minute clip, we came up with a lot of different stuff that we saw, right? It's pretty specific. Uh, little Johnny not paying attention, kind of doing his own thing, kind of it looks like it could be a distraction. We had kids responding orally. Um, we had students that were using manipulatives to create different things. So that gives us a lot of things that we can talk about in two and a half minutes. That so, was a real world learning experience. At the very end, she said, oh, you're right, there's the split in my skirt is an angle. There you go. You right. know, there you right. go. Yeah, that's just, I thought she and I didn't catch that. Yeah, I heard her say it. I, I didn't catch that. Said, and so, yeah. again, in two and a half minutes, we came up with five or six different things that could produce a conversation with, mm -hmm. you, know, one, uh, you know, two or three people about what we saw and what we can use and things like that. So imagine if you're in there for 10, 15 minutes, you know, you're going to have a lot of different stuff going on that you can talk about. Um, does everybody feel okay with doing that? So are you all ready to do one with your, on your own, maybe with your partner? Yeah, I got another video clip that we can watch. Let's watch that one. So just turn it over and do this Yeah, one just use it on the back. And I've got tons of those, and if y'all want a copy of it, just let me know, and I can um, get you an extra copy of that. Hey, bro, I want you to take three. Okay. So this one, don't worry too much about what's said on there, but just kind of watch what the students are doing. Exactly is a chemical. See if you can remember what that is from what we talked about. Ready? Turn to your partner. Tell them what a chemical is. Teach. Okay. <laughs> Now, 
If I'm a chemist and I look at this, can I tell exactly how much of each element is in this chemical? Yes. yes. And each molecule of this chemical. Is this an element or a compound? Compound. Compound. Explain your partner why that's a compound, baby. Teach. John Crenshaw does that, where he does his option A, option B. Yeah. Um, to some extent, you know, he lets the students teach. Right, which is more the high school version yeah. to where you're not quite as active and you're not making the noise right. and that kind of stuff. But it's his, the high school version of, right. you know, having your class teach your classmates and having you, you know, interact with each other. Yeah. Um, so I know that was a lot for today. Um, and like I said, we're going to meet more about this to sort of go over it and talk with everybody about it. Um, but, you know, just sort of be thinking about um, this sort of idea of us kind of looking together, working together. Um, you know, Kathy, I'm going to have to go watch Rebecca when she does this now because this is fascinating to me. Um, you could walk in probably any period and her kids would know what to do yeah. and that's, this year with it. I almost get a kick out of it when I hear it through the door. Especially when my room is quiet, but when I've seen when I've proctored those math kids during an SOL test, I'll see the hand motions. They're quiet, but they're doing the whatever it is they're doing, mm -hmm. and so they. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I, class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Elementary. One, two, three. Eyes on me, and they yeah. respond. One, two. Yeah. Eyes on you. Yeah. yeah. Same idea. Because yeah. that was at That's the beginning. At the beginning, yeah. they'll say class. She says class, they say okay, mm -hmm. and then she'll go, and then they'll go, yeah. and then they'll do their thing between. But you've got to be used, some of it has to have hand motion because it helps you remember yeah. it so you can do it later. Just like what you all did with your organizer, 
what was it? Something, something, something sexy? Sexy. The sexy okay. paragraphs. <laughs> but yeah. the kids remembered it. And right. when he practiced right now, they had to do wishy. I know what it was, wishy. And they, as soon as they got their piece of paper, they could brain dump and write down the wishy. But we practiced it. It was not like we just taught it and then we just said, okay, do it on that day. We practiced it every day or every other day. We practiced it. Right, to practice the, the pronouns. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm kind of excited about stuff like this. Yeah. I, I, you know, like I said, I mean, you have I, to do that to get me to remember time. history. I have to have some that's time. Sort of, that's, that's sort of my, my thing is that, you know, I feel like. I feel like we've been standing still for a while here, um, and you know I think that I think that we just need a, a soft nudge, nudge in the rear end, and I think that I think that we have the people, and I think we have the stuff that we can do a lot of these things, and, and we can learn a lot from each other. Um, you know, I learn stuff every day from y'all, um, and you know, Rebecca, I'm going to her yeah. class. I'm be, I got to see this, Rebecca. So um, no, but I'm just sort of be thinking about that. Um, you know, if you, like I said, if you've got any ideas for it or anything like that, let me know. If you think I did something that or we need to do something different or I didn't cover something, let me know. Um, before y'all go, I've got an evaluation. Um, What's this Burke group? Uh, it's just a, uh, it's like a, it's just a channel on YouTube. They've got a bunch of different teaching videos. Um, a lot of different, just different types of strategies that they can use. Uh, let me get this uh, survey, and when y'all are done with that, um, y'all are free to go. Uh, so Burke Group on YouTube? Yeah, if you search Burke Group YouTube, like in Google, it should come up. Um, B-E-R-C. B-E-R-C. Um, and I can send this, if y'all want, I can send this to y'all in uh, like an email attachment. Um, and then that way you would have you'd have the links to it. They take pride in saying that right now. I don't know why. But I mean, you know, it's not like when everybody else. I was just telling him that his first period class is almost that same kind of thing. And that when the pledge comes on, the rest of us be standing up and say, "Okay, do not say the pledge." And his class will say, "Go," or he'll say something. Now you may not even realize you say it or whatever. I don't know. But the first couple weeks of school, I would say, "Win the pledge," and. They have said it loud every single day since. Not and like I don't like I don't even do it. They stand up and they do it themselves. Yes. But I, I mean, it's it. automatic. It's not just every you know when it says stand up and do it. He says now and they're like we pledge allegiance to when the flag. I, when I was in when I was in the um, room I'm in now when I had my classroom in there, they would almost yell it, um, and then they try to do it when we moved. But I had neighbors. And when I, I didn't want to be rude to them. I, don't, I always say let everybody hear it. But I mean, it's kind of like that lead thing where you give them a clue, a cue, and then they do something. You know, and then you, you know, they're like, okay.